our pro staff that did a really good job, um, really good uh, prep in terms of being able to have our evaluations lined up with our coaches so everyone was on the same page. Also want to make sure Matt Feinstein gets some credit. You know, he matches our cap, cap, helps us negotiate. He did a fantastic job this year and continues to get better and better every year. Um, Jalen Johnson, probably the first topic. Um, really proud to get that done. You know, we talked to the combine. I thought we were close. And um, we got over that um, deadline by a couple of days. But we were able to close that thing up. And um, Jalen's done an unbelievable job. He's grown since we've been together. And we expect him to continue to grow, uh, bring others along, and continue to lead our group, especially that defensive side of the ball. Uh, free agency went really well. Uh, we wanted to continue to add impact players and create depth as well. Um, we stayed opportunistic with some things that popped up that we you know, didn't expect, uh, like Kevin Byard. Um, and he's, he's going to be a really good addition on the back end, communication, leadership. Um, he still has speed. He still has ball skills. I really think he's going to affect the defensive group. Um, at a high level. Uh, with the trades, you know, uh, Keenan Allen popped up, which was a really cool opportunity, you know, for where we're headed, um, which is going to be with a young quarterback. I thought it was an absolute perfect fit. I don't think there's a better receiver in the league that can be better for a young quarterback um, in terms of understanding the NFL game, timing, space, uh, reading defenses. So uh, I think that's a great addition. It balances the field with DJ on the other side. Cole and Everett at tight end, Swift at running back. We have a lot of really cool things that can get going um, and allow us to be dynamic and, and really special. Um, Justin, probably one of the harder things I had to do. Um, I know, you know, I always kind of touch on the empathy part. You know, like having that conversation with my own son was hard. Um, his jersey's up in his room. Uh, so it kind of puts into, you know, puts that into um, perspective of how difficult those uh, moves are but really felt like that was best for our organization and best for Justin. I said that at the combine, I want to do right by him. We did that. Um, we had a really good conversation. I actually went to Flus's house and uh, we had that conversation together with him uh, over the phone. And um, again, one of the harder things we had to do, but I thought it was necessary for us heading the right direction. Draft, we're going to leave here, get right back to the draft process. Actually going to fly to LSU straight from here and their pro day before heading back to Chicago. Um, just continue to put all the information together every day. I feel like we get more and more clarity as we move forward. So we're excited about where we're going, and um, everything looks promising. Ryan, Ryan you could, the trade for Keenan, how nimble yeah. did you have to be, and how did that whole thing all come together during, obviously, a pretty busy period for you? Yeah, so, you know, that's one of the things our, our staff does really well, just identify, you know, potential cap casualties um, based on what other teams are, are looking to do. Um, so. It wasn't, we didn't have total clarity on it, but when it happened, we were able to adjust and, and get into some conversations that we could capitalize on it. Um, again, my time in KC, I watched him, you know, do some really cool things for a long period of time. And to watch the tape, it actually blew me away how um, high of a level he's still playing at his age. Are you Regarding anticipating an extension for him at some point? So I know he's 32, but that. Yeah, I think down, down the road, um, I'm, uh, I try to be, intentional with the order that we do uh, extensions. So um, we'll review that and kind of see what our order looks like. Um, but for what he stands for, I would love to have him long term. Regarding the fields trade, mm -hmm. why the Steelers and were there other teams potentially that you could have moved them to? Yeah, there are other teams. Um, you know, the Steelers were just an opportunity where it was almost like a more of a you know, they have a starter with Russ, but there was more of an open competition, it felt like, from my perspective, um, where there are other opportunities where there were some, you know, quarterbacks that are either veteran guys or young guys that would already been paid. So it would have been a tougher situation for him to get on the field. How did Before the market that, shape up in, in the weeks leading up to that? I know that there are people who look at the return and go, oh, it's not a ton, but yeah. I, I imagine that, did you expect it to be more? Kind of when the preseason or when the off season started. Yeah, it was a little bit of a surprise, but you know, as you do research and you have conversations, you have to kind of adjust to the market. Um, but I think just with you know how other teams are are built, because if you look at the beginning, you know, there's probably teams that are looking at the draft for guys to fill in. On the back end, the playoff teams probably have someone in place. So it really was a smaller pool, you know, of teams. But so. So before they trade, is, this was finalized. Was there like a decision day before that where you feel good about these rookie quarterbacks to move on from Justin? 
Yeah, we had been putting that information together all along, just trying to measure how we wanted to go about doing it. Um, I know there's a lot of talk about, you know, having Justin there and um, drafting the quarterback as well. We had a lot of deep conversations, and I got some really good guys on my staff to really dig into how that would play out in terms of the locker room. How would that play out with a young guy that needs a lot of reps? How would that play out with just the command and leadership that you need in that position? And we felt like it was best to to probably move on and 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 allow a young quarterback to come in and, and work into that role. How did he handle the news? Um, he was positive. His tone was good. Um, you know, I think what was important for Flus and I is to really express to him, although this is a really tough decision, like how much he means to the city of Chicago, our fan base, and us. Um, I thought he was a class act and how he handled the ups and downs of, of the start of his career. Um, but, you know, he sounded good. The tone was good. When did the Steelers emerge as the best trade partner? Um, is that after the picket move or is that in that <clears throat> time frame, I guess? In that time frame, yeah. Ryan, the, the number nine pick is it? one that you guys obviously put a lot of work into as well. What, mm -hmm. You obviously go through a lot of scenarios. What excites yeah. you about the number of different potential avenues that you may have there? Yeah, I like the numbers. Um, I've talked about this when I first got here, but we you know, have different tiers on our draft board. So I like the numbers in terms of the talented players that can get to nine. Um, we're going to do some cool things when we get back, kind of break into teams. And you know, one team is going to talk about you know, what's the it, the tackle position is the best to go after. The wide receiver is the best. The defensive end is the best. And use factual information to kind of spit that out. And we'll have a debate in terms of what's more impactful for a football team, short term and long term. So I'm looking forward to that because exercise. Because of the currency you have, is there a consideration to move it back because of also the stack of players there as well? For sure. Yeah. yeah. And that'll just kind of play out and we'll see what the numbers look like. And that'll kind of dictate how far we can move back if we decide to do that. Ryan, you made a lot of moves so far. Do you feel like there's more depth and flexibility, or do you feel like you may have your current five right now, or is that something that you're still looking at too? Yeah, I like, um, you know, with Bates coming in, um, you know, I feel like we've created some depth there and versatility. It's something that has uh, really uh, bothered me for a long time, just in terms of the lack of flexibility that we've had in the past. Um, and it stresses you out, you know, big time going week to week. So I feel like we have more versatility now and competition. Right. Ryan, over the Cole last week. said that, that Bruce called him yeah. about the Justin trade. Um, how, how important was that for you guys to communicate with key leaders on the team? And yeah. then what type of feedback did you guys get as a result of that communication? Yeah, uh, we try to do a really good job communicating with our players. You know, we expect the same for them. Like if, if they're going through something, they have a problem with something, we want them to come to us and, and communicate that rather than keep it in. So we thought that transparency was good. Let it hear, let them hear from us uh, first. Um, you could tell they really appreciated it, and it was almost like, "Hey, you don't need to do this, but we feel like we should." Um, and I think that goes a long ways with our guys. Um, was it? There's a second part of your question. Just yeah, what was the feedback yeah. that they had in, or in terms of losing Justin? I guess and moving on. Yeah, I think um, DJ's quote there. You know, it's you know, business is a business or something like that. I think they understand that there is a business part to it and it's not something where just because you trade someone doesn't mean you don't like them or don't appreciate them um man so that we thought that was the best move for for where we're at why, why, do, you think it, why do you think it didn't work out um there's, there's a lot to unpack there you know i think you know if you go through the whole deal like in the very beginning i, I think that was a choppy start you know rookie year um and then when, when I came in, you know, we had some cleaning up to do, which then delayed another year of, of, of adding talent and supporting. Um, and then just in terms of the game, you know, I feel like he was making strides and improving. The problem is, and it's really, and, and that's what I try to explain, it's, it wasn't just in verse one of these rookies, it's really the timeline and how much runway that you have, because really to get a guy up off the ground, you need to support him with as much talent as possible. And then that flips, because then they take so much cap space, which is a good thing if you, you get to that point. But then they have to be the reason you start winning. So then it's harder to add the talent you know, around them. And you can look around the league, and it, it happens a lot. And really, the teams that can su uh, sustain success through that period, I think, do a really special job. Brian, over the last week, what have you learned about Caleb Williams that you need to know in this draft? 
Yeah, I will say when you talk to his teammates, um, they, don't, they don't like him. They love him. Um, his leadership, how he brings people together. Um, he's intentional with his leadership. Um, same goes with the staff. Um, I'm having a hard time finding a, a person that doesn't like him or even love him and thinks, you know, that he can reach uh, the highest limits. So um, the feedback's been good. Do you have the top 30 for him planned already? Yeah. Yep. You know when that's going uh, to be that first week of April. That's when our first big wave comes in, and he'll be a part of that. What, having spent so many days out in L.A. and a big contingent from the team there, yeah. what, what do you hope to glean when he comes to Hallis? Um, just another touch point. Continue to, um, and I've learned this over the years when guys come in, you can really do some installations, take a break, um, and then have them reinstalled back to you just in terms of recall. Um, build relationships with, with <coughs> coaches. Make sure that there's compatibility there. Since he didn't give medical at the combine, will that be the one chance you guys will have to get that information yeah. as well? Yep. How much are you maybe comparing and contrasting him still with maybe the other quarterbacks, McCarthy, May, Daniels, or is it now every information we can get? Um, no, we're going to continue the process. Um, like I said, we're going to go to LSU um, right from here. We'll continue to evaluate everybody. Um, you know, I do think, as I said before, like we, we gain clarity as we move forward. Um, which is a good thing, but we also want to make sure that we continue and, and finish the process with the rest of the class. North, as well. North Carolina, too. Um, our can't make that one, but um, our quarterback coach um, and some of my executives will be there. Ryan, when you say he's intentional with his leadership, what's an example of, of things that you've heard or seen that tell you that? Yeah, um, you know, we look for guys that can bring others around. So the cool thing, you know, there's pros and cons in this NIL setup. Um, but the cool thing is you do have some resources to, you know, take your own line out to dinner. Um, you know, you see the Christmas gifts uh, that the NFL guys do. Um, so really bringing those guys together, spending time, and creating that bond is really what you're looking for in that position, and he's done that. What was he like at dinner the couple nights before the, his pro day with his teammates there? Yeah, really uh, mature. Um, one of my guys kind of bumped me on it, which I think is rare these days. For a 22-year-old, he never touched his phone. Um, so really intentional with his conversations and you know, talking about his interests and, and things that he likes to do. So really good uh, touch point. The draft is one month from today. Do you, mm -hmm. do you know when, or at least ideally, when you would have your decision made about who you're taking? I don't. I don't right now. Hopefully it just hits me. <laughs> how, how different is it working with a player or getting to know a player in this NIL era and then specifically with Caleb, somebody who does not have an agent? Yeah, with the NIL deal, um, <clears throat> again, there's pros and cons. I'm starting to learn that I think for us, when we gather information, it's, it's actually pretty helpful. Um, it puts these guys in the spotlight, gives them more responsibility, it forces them to prioritize. Um, Money, business, football, um, school, how do they handle that? What kind of structure do they put around them to make sure that they're making good decisions? They have people that can say, no, like, that's not going to fit in my timeline. So um, I think there's some positives there, and, and I'm picking that up. And then him, him not having an agent, is that something that I guess you guys know now so you can kind of prepare for that? Is that unique as well? Yeah, unique situation. I understand it, though. Um, so, you know, with the draft process, you know, it doesn't, um, it doesn't make it too difficult. There's some little things, communication, and just understanding the landscape of, of that. That's probably one of the more negative things. But there's probably a lot of pros, too, in, in his situation specifically. Ron, you've been very forthright in expressing your confidence in Toulouse. Mm -hmm. When you look at the quarterback development part of it specifically, what gives you the most confidence in him and, and the group he's assembled to oversee the development of a young quarterback? Yeah, um, I would say first, um, I don't think everyone really gets a good view of it. Flus does an amazing job building relationships. Um, and I think whoever that is, like there's going to be a relationship where you know your head coach has your back. Um, and I think that's important. The other piece is just very forward thinking. We, we both are in terms of creating structure to make sure we're the young quarterback, especially in our market. Um, that we do set him up for success. Um, I know for sure that the roster is going to do that. It's important to me um, to make sure that there's enough around where he can get off to a fast start and build confidence. Um, 
But at the same time, Shane, Flus, Carey, like they have a good plan too. We have Thomas Brown who's in Carolina, so he's had some exposure to, um, you know, a high pick, you know, early. Um, so I think really collectively the whole group's going to do a really good job. What well, resonated two more guys about Shane when you guys were obviously making your decision on OC? What, what made him stand out? Um, love his background. Um, you know, his time with Pete, his time with Sean McVay, time with Bill Belichick. Um, I know for myself, when you get exposed to many different ways of, of doing things, you can kind of take the pros uh, of those things and kind of make it your own and kind of ditch the, the, the cons or the things that don't work really well in those systems. Um, so a ton of knowledge, I think the biggest thing, and, and we've sit down with these young guys, his ability to communicate and teach is outstanding. Um, it, it's special to, to be a part of and, and watch. So um, really like Shane, and I think we're in good hands there. You, you mentioned that. I'm sure you'd like to have more than four picks. Um, but if, if you understand that, when you compare that to the percentage of holes that are still in the roster, you have to spend before. Are you comfortable that you can fill the remaining holes in the roster between that and the next one that's picked? I do. I do. We've looked at that. You know, if we don't move at all, I think that's 25 picks in three years, which is over, you know, eight and some change. Um, so I like where we're at there um, on top of, you know, being set up next year to have a, a pretty good uh, setup as well. And I think it, it matches the draft. I think. A lot of guys went back to school this year. I think you're going to see a significant drop off. Um, you know, hopefully some guys squeak through, but it actually, the way we're set up in the draft this year actually pairs up really well with how I think it's going to play out. Thanks, guys.